A very good evening to you and thank you for joining us on Y254. This, are, this is our first show that is on Wednesday here, year 2021. And we'd like to wish you a very happy new year. I believe the year is still new. And tonight we're going to be talking about a topic that we've had this conversation several times. Uh, it's a conversation that people have had in different platforms and that is youth unemployment. We just try to reflect on the impact of the pandemic that is uh, the COVID-19 throughout the effect that it has had on unemployment in 2020, on to year 2020 and see what can we do to create more opportunities for young people uh, the year 2021. What can the ministry of youth or rather the government also help out in different ways to help us tackle unemployment. We try to look at um, skills. People have most of the times talked about skills mismatch. Is it really a problem that we have uh, and how can we be able to solve that? Talk to us across our social media platforms that is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Moriuki. And to help us talk about this tonight, we have John Miner who is a CEO workmate. Uh, we want to be joined by uh, the advisor that is uh, Lydia Madhu, who is an advisor to the CS Ministry of Youth, but apparently, due to some unavoidable circumstances, she could not be able to join us tonight. But we'll try our best here, uh, with the help of John, to try and tackle uh, this uh, topic to the best of our knowledge. Welcome to the broadcast. Hello, John. How are you? Hi, Patricia. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, thank you for finding the time to be here with us. Uh, we know that. Uh, with everything that has uh, that tra transpired in 2020, uh, very many things were affected by the pandemic. And a report by the International Labour Organization, that is um, ELO, uh, reported that one of six youths has reported to have lost jobs because of the pandemic. This is a report that was done in August uh, 2020. And male, the male dem demographic is the demographic that was highly affected. What is your thought? Uh, on this report. Uh, thank you, Patricia. I think 2020 caught everybody off guard, mm -hmm. and especially the people who are young mm -hmm. and the people who have already just started working. Mm -hmm. uh, it has affected uh, across the SMEs, mm -hmm. uh, which are now the biggest employers okay. for these young people. Mm -hmm. So you find that if the SMEs are affected, mm -hmm. then young people tend to lose their jobs, mm -hmm. and that is a big effect, is a ripple effect, mm -hmm. and I think we will need uh, a, a turnaround strategy mm -hmm. to be able to counter the effect. Okay. Before we even talk about like the turnaround uh, uh, effect or ways on how now we can be able to curb this problem that you have, we've talked about unemployment uh, in this country for very, very, very many times. Different people have held um, meetings, uh, conferences to try and address the issue on unemployment. What do you think is the root cause? Is it our economy? Is it not being able to adapt the people that come out of the, uh, at, at the workplace? Is it that our graduates are not skilled enough? What would you say is our root cause, our major problem, so that we are able now to talk about what solution do we render to that problem? Patricia, I'll say there's no straight answer, mm -hmm. just a, like a one fixed solution to that problem because this is a problem that has built over time. Mm -hmm. And as you can tell from now, even the, the effects of the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, they have just multiplied mm -hmm. the effect. But even before the pandemic, mm -hmm. this is a challenge that we have had of a high rate of unemployment. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine like the retirement mm -hmm. uh, age, mm -hmm. you know, is uh, upwards of 60s going up. Mm -hmm. and these are things that are also, I think, they're denying the young people a chance to just practice their, their, what they have learned in school. Mm -hmm. They talk about a lot of mismatch in, uh, in job placements. Mm -hmm. I think, on my opinion, that the mismatch that is uh, placed on the job is also uh, brought about by corruption mm -hmm. in the country. Okay. Uh the government during the pandemic, uh, different ministries tried to create ways on how the young people can uh, engage themselves because we had the biggest number of young people out here because you know people, students were not in school uh, and this now increased the number of young people who are very idle. And they came up with Kazim Tani, the, I think the Ministry of ICT came up with uh, uh, 
ways on how they can be able to engage young people. We saw the film classification board coming up with a project where you, you're able to uh, produce certain content, have film uh, with your phone, and be awarded something, uh, a certain token. What is your thought on the Kazim Taani, which there was a, some scandals around that because there were funds that were being misused, there were young people showing up and not being paid their money based on how much they had worked. There's a lot of corruption around that. So for us to be able to even create good projects as a country and have these projects benefit uh, the young people that we are creating them for, what do you think in what ways can people given these responsibilities do better focusing on the uh, outcome of the Kazim Tani scandals that came out? Uh, Patricia, I'll say it's unfortunate mm -hmm. uh, that when the, the government sits, I think with the, all the advices that they have, mm -hmm. and I wish Lydia was here so that we, they can address, how do they come up with the, with the, with the programs mm -hmm. that they give out to the youth? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have skilled qualified, competent mm -hmm. young people out here, but you find that the only projects that can be given out to the youth are the projects of, you know, just go out, you know, take out the garbage, mm -hmm. clean up. I understand this can be the effect because it has the capacity to accommodate large numbers. But even as you've said, mm -hmm. we have seen in situation where the, the, the youth have already done the task, mm -hmm. but now again payment becomes problem. another another problem. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think the government needs to like create some internship hubs, mm -hmm. you know, work across with the public universities, mm -hmm. create makeshift companies mm -hmm. where now if these youth, they, when they, the minute they come from the um, uh, university, mm -hmm. they can be placed somewhere mm -hmm. for a couple of time for them just to get their own skill on job uh, you know experience that the uh, uh, employers out here so much want okay yes uh, we know the young people in schools today uh, this is the manpower we're looking at uh, to help us create a better economy in the future uh, these are people who can also contribute in our economy that is in terms of the growth that we want to see that every citizen would like to see in the country when you've talked about uh, project that the government probably uh, brings about as a way to cope with certain measures like the Kazim Tani that was there because of the pandemic. You've talked about, uh, we know how these people are expecting to do is go clean things around um, their villages, their cities and all that. And I'd like to bring you in in terms of roles and probably responsibilities or opportunities that are there in capacities where the youth can serve us. We're not trying to disregard the Kazim Tani, but we're just trying, what do you think we can do? Instead of the government coming and saying, let us go and slash uh, all these. I saw uh, the governor of Machakos County uh, talking about they would have come up with probably better ways to engage them than just going and having them clear a bush and then next week the bush is going to grow instead they would have, a, have a, i've had them go build certain uh, toilets in places where there are no latrines uh, go be involved in a certain road work and all that what is your opinion in, in a way that we are able to take these youths with their skills and provide for them opportunities and platforms in a way that we are still nurturing that which is inside of them all right great I think you have to look at it from a broad mm -hmm. perspective mm -hmm. because, you know, even the, in terms of the job, mm -hmm. the people now who are employed, okay. uh, when you look at them, majority, almost more than 70% of the employed, they are employed on the, you know, not on the, uh, on the corporate se uh, sector, but on the, on the, on the Juakali sector. Mm -hmm. uh, and this tells you something uh, that the most the majority of the jobs they are not formal jobs mm -hmm. you know and that's why i think the government is tending to go towards that but we find that these are these are only places where youth or the, the young people who which are who are the majority in this country they are only using their their manual labor we need to develop uh, uh, opportunities where guys can can start using their intellectual mm -hmm. the, we, you know uh, stuff like having 
you know, automating, I, I, and I'm, I'm happy with the progress so far, mm -hmm. because we cannot say that the government is not doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ministry of ICT, I'm aware, they're doing something with um, uh, Ajira Digital, mm -hmm. uh, just equipping youth with the skills, and, and personally I've attended some of the trainings, mm -hmm. which I think they're very beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, and the problem that is the, the, the problem that is uh, available right now mm -hmm. is that we are not tapping into the intellect mm -hmm. of the young Kenyans mm -hmm. who are very bright and very sharp. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that I can tell you for, for sure. So now how do we do that? How do we not just sit down? Uh, people don't find themselves in a boardroom and sit down and say, uh, we've now decided that we're going to engage the young people in certain ways without even considering what is it that these young people need? In what ways are they skilled? Now, in how can we now be able to bring about projects that are going to benefit them? Because at the end of the day, they slashed the grass, but what next? So how do we be, uh, how do we come up with projects that really meet the needs and the skills of the young people and have something that is long term? Oh, <laughs> that needs a multi, multifaceted approach mm -hmm. because, you know, you have to segment this, mm -hmm. these people. Mm -hmm. We have got people who are graduates. Mm -hmm. We have got people who just finished their uh, class eight mm -hmm. and they did not continue with the education. Mm -hmm. We have got guys who reached up to their form four level. Mm -hmm. So you cannot as well bring a solution that will cut across. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you ask about the solutions mm -hmm. and uh, because we can, take ages discussing the problems and yeah. the problems will still be there. Yeah. Uh, as young people, we have the, ob the, the obligation to put ourselves out there. And it's not all lost. I mean, y now in this digital age, in this internet era, mm -hmm. in this information age, even the people who say that they do not have the skill, I mean, you have just to utilize what you have, mm -hmm. even 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 Moses was asked in the what do you have yeah. on your hand? Yeah, uh, right now mm -hmm. we have got the opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's a global opportunity. We can become global citizens mm -hmm. by using the internet mm -hmm. in a productive way, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why what we are trying to uh, to do with uh, WorkMate Digital, uh, what we are calling the Virtual Jobs Finder platform, mm -hmm. is that we try to find the virtual jobs. We source for them globally mm -hmm. and just try to bring them uh, locally and in the local level we try to give the skills uh, through you know organized institutions like mm -hmm. the higher education uh, the t vets mm -hmm. just try to show them this is how it is done because one of the major problems is that it's an information gap mm -hmm. it's a knowledge gap okay. uh, you know the skills that are required for you to start making money online making money from home you know away from the conventional uh, uh, employment is that you can use the internet as a resource to equip yourself and start earning something okay yes i would like us to talk about adaptability and adaptability in the sense that we have people who have already graduated that are out here looking for jobs and they cannot find them. They are doing their best to probably uh, be diverse, which is something that I would like us to tackle probably towards the end of this interview. Yeah. But how can a young boy, a young girl who has been raised up in the village, uh, their mother has gotten an opportunity through the government sponsored program, they are here joining the university and all that. And every student that we have in campus right now, in a college, in a technical institute, studying something and their hope at the end of the day is that how graduate and find a job but most of the times we are shocked when you come out here and these jobs are so 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 hard to find so how now do we try to adapt we know what is happening out here how can teachers and lecturers involved with these uh, students right now in what way can we help them uh, grow or uh, acquire certain knowledge that is going to help them cope with the situations that are out here. Because if, I believe we, if we walked, uh, for example, the University of Nairobi that is just uh, right here, if we walked in there and asked those students, what is their hope? It is that the day they get to graduate, that is when uh, they are going to probably get a job. So I'm going to be taking your answer to that question when we come back. Let us take a very short break here on Y254. We shall be right back. Imagine.
Thank you for staying with us on Y254. Tonight we're talking about youth unemployment. If you're just joining us, talk to us across our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Muriuki. Before we went for the break, we were talking about uh, adaptability. And John, I would like to take your answer on that. In what way can we be able to prepare the young people? We know how the state of unemployment is in the country. Uh, how do we prepare them so that now as they get out here, they don't come with so much expectations and we have young people falling into depression, getting involved in things that are not right. Yeah. Uh, Patricia, I'll say to the young people mm -hmm. that as much as we, we like to look at the government mm -hmm. as the source of employment, we also have to like change our perspective mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what government what we expect from the government mm -hmm. government has already created a very enabling op uh, a, a very enabling environment okay i mean in kenya we are you know across the world we have a number somewhere mm -hmm. in terms of the internet connectivity okay uh, we know we have single source of power which mm -hmm. is kenya power mm -hmm. uh, but they are doing a good job mm -hmm. uh, so with this kind of uh, uh, you know, environment that has been created by government. Mm -hmm. I'd say going by the numbers, even in the past, the number of jobs created per year and the number of graduates that are coming out every year, they, they, don't, they don't conquer. Mm -hmm. So what do, we, what do we do to address this situation? And that's where now adaptability comes in, mm -hmm. where now guys have to be very innovative. We have seen guys making... Uh, uh, guys in the media space uh, creating their YouTube channels mm -hmm. creating their vlogs mm -hmm. and that's an income stream you know we have to get out of that notion that I have to you know get from uh, my journalism school and come to Y254 and become a news anchor mm -hmm. you know this, the, the space there is limited mm -hmm. and the, 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 the population is crowded so what do we do we have to come up with new ways we have to be remain innovative and cut niche I mean, in the, in the developed world, I see guys doing niche business. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I only focus on eyebrows. Mm -hmm. And you become a master of that. Mm -hmm. So that way, the opportunities become big. Okay. We are not all of us fighting for the anchor seat. Mm -hmm. But now in, in media, we, in, in any industry, mm -hmm. if you look at all the components that make that particular industry, mm -hmm. you can identify a niche and run with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it takes time. Uh, the other thing is that guys want just to come out and just make it big. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a process. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a process. You have to accept and respect the process to go through. And I think even as Workmate Digital Solutions, mm -hmm. what we are trying to do is to get to the, uh, to the youth and its impact on their skills while they are still in school. Mm -hmm. So there is need uh, to partnership from the schools, the institutions that are offering these courses to partner with industry so that even the industry can say this is what we expect, okay. if this is what we expect. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot, a lot of free time and this is a resource that is the most expensive. Mm -hmm. And this is something I say all the time, everywhere I go, like how do you spend your time? because it's more important than the cash. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of time in between classes. There's a lot of time after school sessions. Uh, these people can be able to engage and nurture and grow their skills mm -hmm. on what the job requires. Okay. As you're going with the curriculum, yes, but remember the industry, this is what is needed. Mm -hmm. You have to complete your curriculum, get your degree, because that's the, almost the entry level right now. You have to get a degree to show that you're literate and you can be able to assist the companies. Mm -hmm. But on the, on the side, on the side, what outside here is called a side hustle. Mm -hmm. On the side, please have a side hustle to nurture your talent, to nurture your skill, and something that you can passionate about, and sooner you'll be able to monetize that. Okay, uh, let us talk about skills uh, mismatch. Uh, I know you interact with a lot of people or a lot of candidates applying for jobs, uh, that is as a uh, chief executive officer of Workmate. Would you say, at what rate, probably zero to 10, have you noticed that people apl are applying for jobs, but the moment these jobs are presented to them, they have the best grades, the best GPAs on paper, but when it comes to the skills, 
it is there is a disconnect at what first of all between zero to ten how much would you say you experience this problem <laughs> 80 wow okay 80%. so how now do we address it how do we make sure that we're not just giving these students theory and not preparing them for the for the job market because at the end of the day the employer does not have time to train you they are looking to make money so how is it now that I will not come out of school, I don't have the skills and expect that I'm going to go to a company, have like, a, like one year training and the employer is not going to take that because I'm going to be, let's say, wasting their time instead of them hiring someone who's already skilled and can play the role. How do we now practically solve that problem? Patricia, that's also a tough one mm -hmm. because guys are applying anything mm -hmm. that looks like a job okay right mm -hmm. so they don't care but we tell them to provided that we are hiring we tell them to I, be I, I mean diverse they, if i notice my pool my my profession is crowded and there are no opportunities i'll just go throw in my cv I'll, elsewhere I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a real life example mm -hmm. Uh, just the other day, somebody posted a job on the platform, mm -hmm. uh, workmate.club, and they just wanted one mm -hmm. receptionist. Mm -hmm. you know, right? It's a small shop here in town. Mm -hmm. and they said, you know, I want a receptionist who has this and this kind of experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we posted it uh, up online mm -hmm. on our platform and we pushed on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, within 72 hours, we had 36 applications wow right and we thought that oh this is a lot who will go through all this stuff mm -hmm. then waking up the following morning the applications were more than 180. wow so you can tell that 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 need mm -hmm. that is out there mm -hmm. people are hungry to work for something mm -hmm. uh, and even internship you find that now uh, when you are announced for an internship even the qualified people yeah, are, apl are applying for the internship. Mm -hmm. What does this tell you? There's a big gap. Mm -hmm. there's, there's labor that is ready to be utilized. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are not harnessing that power. Mm -hmm. That power can be a, a big time bomb mm -hmm. that can come up and uh, explode. But there's a way, if there's a way we can tap into this potential and convert it mm -hmm. into something that is productive. And you know, we are cursing COVID-19 for every bad thing that it's, uh, it has done. Mm -hmm. But uh, for, 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 for guys like us who, you know, promote the issue of even working from home, mm -hmm. work from anywhere, provided you have your laptop, you're connected to the internet, uh, this has been the biggest experiment. Mm -hmm. The whole world has been told, shut your doors and work, work from, from home. home. And I know there are companies who will not reopen their doors. Mm -hmm. There are companies who are going to downsize because they have realized, look, we don't we really need... We need all those people. Yeah. We don't really... Not people. We mm -hmm. need the people, mm -hmm. but they can work from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is also the, the thing that we are trying to sh show the SMEs, that it's possible for you to use uh, a platform, an online uh, platform, mm -hmm. to, to hire, to mm -hmm. outsource remotely okay. guys who have got experience. Mm -hmm. So you only pay them for the quality work that they deliver. Mm -hmm. You don't pay them, you know, you don't put them on a payroll and, and the payroll becomes a very big, uh, uh, it becomes a very big giant mm -hmm. that is killing down the SMEs. Okay. The SMEs mortality rate is below five years. Mm -hmm. Within five years, you know, either the rent or the payroll. And they end up now hiring, you know, uh, substandard employees. Mm -hmm. And this brings about the mismatch and it lowers the job quality. Okay. And you can see how that is is rippling down okay uh, as we wind up on these i know that uh, for us to be able to create these opportunities every sector involved that is a young person uh, that is a young person watching us tonight they have to change certain things they have to be diverse but i'd like us to talk about uh, the government input and also the private sector input in what ways can they be able uh, because we're looking at uh, being able to create um the, the economy and make it grow. So how can we be able to adapt, to accommodate the labor that we have in this country and that is among the young people that is not utilized currently? How do we do that as you wind up? Personally, I think um, outsourcing is a great uh, way to, you know, like knock off a, a big percentage of that mm -hmm. uh, because you've realized 
like companies who work with guys on shifts mm -hmm. they have got high higher productivity mm -hmm. because if the shifts are short and the guys you know don't overwork mm -hmm. you know they stretch the shift then the new, there's always fresh manpower that comes in to relieve the other fatigued one mm -hmm. so we can take this model and replicate it on our sme mm -hmm. uh, ecosystem mm -hmm. that uh, you only have a few permanent employees okay then now you can be outsourcing and this one will at least make the circulation the experience grow because there are young people who are called out to be entrepreneurs, but look, they have not even been given a chance to walk in on, on, a, on a boardroom yeah. just to see how organization work and they can re do, copy that and start their own. Mm -hmm. So with this kind of um, approach, mm -hmm. I believe we'll have more exposure and we'll even create a better uh, working society. Okay, yes. uh, 30 seconds, a message of hope to young people hoping to find themselves in a certain company or to start a business or to do whatever way that is going to help them uh, create income. 30 seconds, a message of hope. Uh, a message of hope for me, I'll say, time is the biggest, is the biggest asset that you have. Mm -hmm. And if utilized well, then you can be able to uh, become whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Use the internet resource well. Mm -hmm use your time well spend your time as if it was money okay. because literally is more expensive than cash okay thank you very much john for finding the time to join us tonight and share that i hope that uh there are going to be strategies uh brought up by different people that is a government that is a private sector to help us cope with uh youth unemployment and i hope that it is a probably the last time Let's say the last year we get to talk about a very high rate of unemployment in the country. As you've heard from John, take your time as the most valuable thing that you ever have. And I hope and I wish you that, uh, uh, pray that 2021 is going to be better for every young person watching us tonight. Thank you very much. My name is Patricia Morioki. Drive yourselves a very good night.